What is up my beautiful ninjas? How you doing today? It's time for the Pinnacone. I kind of feel like this is the end of the story. Newsflash! Pinnacone's Charmony Festival has entered its countdown phase. Accompanied by Clocky's TikToks, after 12 system hours, this grand celebration will commence with much fanfare. You know what, Dan? You made the wrong decision to stay on the train. Uh, I already told you! We can talk things out! Pom Pom, he has a gun. I think negotiations are broke down. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fluffy. I really have something urgent to attend to, so... I had no choice but to resort to asking this favor of you all. This dude got shark teeth? And a hit marker for an eye? Yeah, Dan, you done. You thought Blade was your problem. Since you already know what you're doing, I'll also have to remind you of its risks. Hey, partner, what's with the hostility? I thought pulling this thing out was just a way of saying hello. In America. For the last time, state your identity and purpose. My name's Boot Hill, and I'm a Galaxy Ranger. A Galaxy Ranger? You look like you've seen a ghost. <laughs> Did you think we all went extinct? <laughs> well, that's the price you pay for being off grid for too long. Bruh, Dan can't even chill without hearing the word price, can he? The righteous heroes of the hunt would never hijack the Astral Express. <laughs> I ain't hijacked anything. What, chatting with someone while holding the gun is considered a hijacking? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. Pardon my frankness, but there are plenty of rumors in the cosmos regarding the Galaxy Ranger's current status, and none of them are pretty stories. I have a hard time believing you. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. The tale that this bunch of Fool spin is getting out of hand. There's even a bit about the Galaxy Rangers being turned into gibbons by Dr. Primitive and they're in some valley screwing around on swings. Of course, I know you won't believe me, which is also why, similarly, I have a hard time believing that you're the real Nameless. I mean, he is prettier when he tries. See the bullets in this gun? Nine millimeter, an eternal, Classic. I may need the Astral Express's help right now, but if you're an imposter just like that one, <laughs> then this bullet might just end up in my head. I can't allow myself to be exposed to danger. That's just the way it goes. So, you all have to first prove yourselves. Huh? Where are you going? Hmm. Recognize this? <laughs> it's a model fudger. The Jade Abacus of Ally and Oath. The CN Joe really gave this to you guys? Yeah, China approves of the train gang. Hmm, model fudger? This is the Jade Abacus gifted to the Express by the Xian Zhou Luo Fu's general, Jing Yuan. Its presence on board serves as the Xianzhou Alliance's official recognition of the Express. Is that enough? <sighs> Not bad, kiddo. Really? And across these sprawling stars, a gentle squeeze is all it takes to rustle up a whole legion of Cloud Knights. Now, I reckon that'd be one Fudge inside to be old. We had to use a Chinese artifact to avoid getting shot. The negotiation skills are impeccable here. Hmm. Now it's your turn. Been ages since the Galaxy Rangers had the spotlight shown on them. We ain't equipped with such fancy gadgets. But I've been around the block enough to know the way to handle these types of situations is easy as pie. All right then. Feel free to toss any questions my way. Let's see if my answers can't turn your trust. If your gut tells you otherwise, still ain't too late to show me the door. And why would I play along? If I truly am a real Galaxy Ranger, you stand to lose nothing. <laughs> Alright then. Tell me. What kind of organization are the Galaxy Rangers? Ah, <laughs> oh, my friend, 
This question is a hard one. I don't think I can even consider us an organization to begin with. Everyone's on their own faded path along the hunt, with their own resolute sense of righteousness and not so welcome among such so-called universal values. Oh, so he knows the May isn't a hunt character. Uh, this reply does not instill trust and only makes your predicament more precarious. I'm guessing you're gonna ask about some form of shared faith, right? But us Galaxy Rangers don't need that sort of thing. What brings us together is a shared bottom line. Never bully the weak. Never kill the innocent. These oaths aren't some lofty beliefs, but the fundamental bottom line that one must never cross as a person. As Galaxy Rangers, we strictly adhere to the bottom line. When someone crosses them, the hunt's vengeance will surely come knocking. Wait a minute, then who did May bully then? And in this moment, the other crucial meaning of bottom line comes into play. As long as you don't cross it, you're free to do whatever you please. You catch my drift? Hmm. Second question. Why do you seek trouble with the Astral Express? I already said that I seek no trouble. I must go to Pinnacone for a matter. But I don't have an invite. And I can't even enter the family's hotel doors. If only I could borrow the Nameless's identity. Uh, the entire cosmos knows your guests of the family. Dude, everybody just needs to pretend to be Dan. Uh, aren't the Galaxy Rangers also esteemed guests? Oh, you've hit the nail on the head. This is why I'm here. It's fine if I tell you. The Rangers are pursuing an imposter. A son of a nice lady posing as one of us. She's on Pentacone right now. Damn, they are really trying to protect that age rating, aren't they? My informant is a memo keeper. She's the same as all memetic organisms, uh, appearing one moment and gone the next. Uh, she scares the fudge out of me. Still, she gave me some vital info. Man, Swan is like a triple agent at this point. That Galaxy Ranger imposter. Who is it? Is that the third question? Is it a hard question? It isn't. Just that you might not believe me. That person calls herself Acheron. And according to our informant, she could be an emanator of nihility. <laughs> That's impossible. Yeah, tell that to a Venturine. <laughs> That's what I said. Ah, don't worry. When I first received the news, I had the exact same reaction as you. IX never gives anyone so much as a first glance, and that's perfectly normal. What reason would they have to bequeath strength unto mortals? Then you must know that emanators can also conceal their own identities, which, for many people, it's better that way. Otherwise, there'd be wanton bloodshed across the cosmos, or even, perhaps, turning their back on the path they're supposed to follow. I had the good fortune of running into an elation emanator. Its appearance was no different than that of those clowns. If it weren't through sheer luck that I got it drunk, I would have never known of its eminent status. Even in the purest hunt, you'll find the Sienjo Alliance under the spotlight and galaxy rangers lurking in the shadows. Paths are inevitably concepts created by people and exist in planes beyond our understanding. I wanna know who the Elation Emanator is though. To reckon that Nihility Emanators don't exist, well, maybe we just ain't nihilistic enough. <sighs> so, do you understand now? Your companions are in danger, and it's pretty harrowing. If you don't wanna believe me, you'd best send a message to them. But I'd advise you to move fast. Nah, I trust me. She saved our ass. We don't know what's happening in the dreamscape or how much of what the memo keeper said is true. And that Acheron, who knows what she intends to do. I'm gonna cast my vote for Kiana. I don't intend to do anything. Never mind. <laughs> That's not up to you. Why are there demon children? Did you know? 
people who come to the land of dreams for the first time, they'll subconsciously stop to reaffirm that they're still walking on solid ground. And then they will unanimously raise their heads to gaze at the sky. Be it reality or dream, staring at the sky is instinctual for humanity. Since the day that the golden hour was completed, it's always been there, watching over every single night of decadence. This is getting creepy really quickly. But now this night sky has been mercilessly severed, dyed with the mist of nihility. And this whole event happened within the course of a single slash of a blade. May, I think you're gonna have to pay for that TV. A single slash of a blade isn't really accurate. It was actually two blades, just that the second one was faster. This is not the time to be flexing. That's not the point. Many guests who weren't supposed to be invited have gathered at this banquet. Even if the harmony is all embracing, I have no choice but to show some of them the door. For the sake of Panacone and the peace. The planet of festivities has no place for you, a puppet of nihility. Those who live in the shadows do not bear the right to tread the illuminated stage. Dude, who is this? Is this the Eon? Speaking of living in the shadows, there's probably not much difference between us. It's only polite to reveal your true self, at least when speaking to others. Panacone's dream master. Oh, or is it the watchmaker? Just another reason that you can't stay. Whether you believe it or not, this is a real me. We are one. Yeah, I think it's time to oath the whole planet, May. Is this the unity that the family espouses? My mortal shell has long since dissipated. The Oak family's 107,336 offspring are now my eyes, ears, and mouths, spreading joy across dreams when required. And in times of essential need, exiling evil from this haven in my stead. From the sound of it, it seems like you're asking me to leave, Panacone. May, you have got to be kidding me. What else did you think he was saying? I am glad that you're an understanding one. Alas, I'm not asking. If you think you can. Yo, Jay, do something. Are you threatening me? <laughs> I ended it with a period. It was a statement, not a threat. Knowing who I am and still showing such malice. You're not the first, nor will you be the last. This scene played out many times before. And usually, when faced with my questions, most people retort, Why can't I? The result has invariably been that they can't. Oh, y'all, she pressed them. You are confident. But be reminded, the family is forgiving, but not weak. The chords of the harmony extend across worlds. If you do not comply, when the blade is unsheathed for even a hair's breadth, you will never be able to escape the eternal centurion's wrath. In all of your lifetime, 137 individuals. That is how many heathens I have exiled since I became Dream Master. 
among them were those who once severed my wings and those who immolated my body. And here I stand again, about to add another mark to the tally. I don't think it's gonna be that easy to kick out Mado. And you will die. I mean, all of you will. Uh, okay, I'm weak. <sighs> but that won't come to pass. I'll do as you ask. I'll leave. Why? A wise choice. I wasn't aware there was a choice. To you, that surely is the only option. Please bear in mind, you and Penicone are of different worlds. Those born on a far bank cannot seek solace across the river. Leave and never return. The radiance of the planet of festivities is overwhelmingly bright, luring in tricksters, wrongdoers, and criminals. But even the harmony itself will never welcome the self-annihilator of nihility. And even more so, when this self-annihilator heralds the destruction of everything, your strength is obviously a gift of the sleeping and shapeless, immeasurable and fathomless, like a tributary spawn from the abyss that brings death and sin to all. Acheron, a befitting name. Dude, but when are we gonna drop the real name? We already know what's right and made, just say it. Take it from someone on the other side of your so-called river. You know better than I do that Panacone has already deviated from the Harmony. Whatever your intentions may be, I foresee only one outcome. Hi, Jade. Its future holds nothing but nihility. Just like all the worlds that have drowned in their shadow. Is that a threat or a promise? Attention, please. The unusual event that occurred moments ago was due to a technical malfunction at Clock Studios theme park. The family has promptly responded to secure the area, and we're happy to report that there have been no injuries. Oh, I swear that was no movie shoot. So many chips fell from the sky, and I even caught one of them. But it vanished in an instant before my very eyes. Excuse me. Are you talking about the Clock Studios theme park incident? Hmm? Yeah, what about it? it oh, Miss Robin! Am I seeing things right? What the hell? Robin's alive? <laughs> no need to worry. I apologize for any inconvenience caused to your delightful dream journey. What you just mentioned about the chips really piqued my interest. Would you mind providing more details about the incident? Uh, oh, it was just those chips you normally see everywhere. The green ones? They fell from the sky as if it were raining. And then those chips simply disappeared. Uh, it appears to be the dream sim tech the Iris family has been developing. Huh? Miss Robin, you mean those chips were all part of a performance? B but I really... Shh. This technology hasn't been made public yet. It was originally planned to debut at the Charmony Festival, but it seems it's been leaked. Can you help me keep this secret? The raining chips... We're supposed to be part of my act. Why is this reminding me of a Venturine? Oh, I see. Then it all makes sense now. I'll do anything to help make the Charmony Festival a success. Thank you. As appreciation, I'd like to give you a token gift. Oh, hell no. This is definitely Sparkle. Oh, this button is... Press it at just the right moment in the celebration. There could be an unexpected treat in store for you oh my god sparkle no this is not the time for terrorism all right it looks like there are other guests who are also confused i'll have to excuse myself please enjoy the dreamscape don't trust this woman it's a renegade asian the family promised they would protect the guests within the dreamscape 
but I witnessed a group of organic life forms making their way to the theme park. And soon after, a rip tore through the sky, and black rain started leaking out of the void. Oh damn, Mace Famous! The family needs to provide a reasonable explanation, or I'll take my loved ones and return to reality. I thought the dreamscape was supposed to be a paradise. If it's not, then there's no point staying here. It appears the good sir has seen many great events. And it's true that an uninvited guest has unexpectedly entered the dreamscape. However, their target is not the ordinary guests, but the ambassadors of the IPC. The family will certainly ensure that the safety of the guests is of the highest importance. What the hell? Why is Sparkle helping? I thought she would be trying to create chaos. Miss Robin, I know the Bloodhound family has already sealed off the theme park and has control over the situation, but it won't resolve the problem. The family can try their best to protect their reputation, but as a guest, I don't wish to gamble with my life. But as you can see, sir, no innocent bystanders were affected in this incident. Perhaps the dreamscape is not as perfect as promised, but there's no place safer than dreams under the family's rule. I believe you know this better than I do. If this incident happened in real life, how many people would be able to walk away from it? Hmm. I could stay here, but keep in mind, guests come to Penacone to enjoy the dreamscapes. They do not wish to be entangled in a conflict between the family and the IPC, so let's not have any more unnecessary incidents. Yo, was the Venturine dead? Of course. With the Charmony Festival about to commence, we will spare no effort in our preparations. Rest assured. To express our apologies, the family has arranged this gift for the guests. Thank you for understanding. You know what? I was right. She about to blow up the whole planet, bruh. Hello. May I ask what happened here? Nothing to be worried about. There's been a small rehearsal mishap at Clock Studios theme park. Please stay calm. Hey, are you a fool? You don't even recognize Miss Robin? Who do you think you're talking to? Huh? I, I, I'm sorry. I, I've just been transferred to the Bloodhound family, and, and I'm still not too used to working on the streets. I, I didn't realize it was you. I, I'm so sorry. Literally how? She's famous as hell here. Hey, don't sweat it. You guys have a tough job. I know how it is. How's the situation looking? Oh, we've sealed off the theme park. Most guests are used to bizarre phenomena in the dreamscape, and so far, no threats have been detected. We can expect order to be restored soon. Rest assured, Miss Robin will intensify our patrols to ensure that no incidents occur. I don't think you're going to be able to patrol a god-powered Asian. I trust you guys. But regarding what happened in the theme park, what do you hounds think about it? It's okay. Feel free to speak your mind. Uh, well... Actually, I was there shortly after it happened. Is it true that the IPC's ambassadors came with ill intent? And that Galaxy Ranger who easily cut through the sky? <sighs> Miss Robin, to tell you the truth, everyone's been talking about it. The myriad factions on Pentacone have already been causing unease for everyone. Thank you all for your loyalty towards the family. The planet of festivities has indeed run into some trouble. The representative from the IPC... He's trying to regain ownership of Penacone and is prepared for a hostile takeover. Damn, you just gonna leak the whole plan? Of course the family did not agree. The results of the failed negotiations... is as you see it now. No wonder. So this is the main reason why the IPC staff are banned from entering the dreamscape. Did they apprehend the troublemaker in the end? He's been banished to the Shadow Realm. Don't worry. Mr. Sunday is currently tracking his whereabouts, and he'll have something to show for it soon. However, given the situation, the IPC surely won't let this go easily. Therefore, we are relying on you hounds to maintain the order and stability of the dreamscape. Please be assured, Miss Robin, we take our orders seriously. 
We won't let those IPC cronies get away with this. If this is the police, we're screwed. Thank you for your hard work. If there are any other members who still feel uneasy, please tell them on my behalf that protecting the dreamscape requires everyone's help. This is a small gift prepared by the Iris family for the guests. There's one for you too. Please. Open it at the Charmony Festival for an unexpected surprise. Dude, the elation coat is insane. I can't believe I received a gift from Miss Robin. It feels like I'm dreaming. Wait, I am in a dream. If trouble comes knocking on our door, we're not afraid to go to war. Rest assured, the dreamscape's peace will be protected by the Bloodhound family. It's all over. Miss Robin? That's the renowned cosmic superstar, Miss Robin! So the guest knows, but not security? I didn't expect to meet a fan here. I'm honored. Welcome to Pentagoni, a world filled with wonderful dreams. I can't believe I'm actually meeting the real Robin! Sh shouldn't you be preparing for the Charmony Festival? Uh, about that real part? Preparation is important. But the ceremony is fundamentally about sharing the Great One's harmony with everyone. If there's a chance to sing with everyone, I will not refuse. Regarding the recent mishap, I understand it negatively impacted some of our guests. As a member of the family, it's only right for me to come forward and offer my apologies to everyone. But, uh, are you sure it was actually a mishap? Everyone saw those chips descending like rain and the red light, tearing through the sky. Claiming it was merely special effects seems a bit far-fetched. Shut up, you saw nothing. Plus, I met that generous gentleman. He looked really out of it and kept talking to himself. Is this also part of the performance? Everyone, please do not panic. I believe that the family will give everyone a satisfactory answer in due time. Even if you say so, Miss Robin, it's hard to believe. <sighs> Some people just never listen, do they? <gasps> it's never ending. It just goes on and on. I'm getting really tired of this. We're breaking character. Sparkle, do something! Miss Robin? Still, I suppose I should keep on helping everyone. I am the epitome of joy, kindness, and goodness, after all. Uh... Huh? What was I just doing? And, uh, who might you be, miss? What? Here, take this, little guest. This gift has been specially prepared for you by the family. Damn, you just straight up took off the disguise? Make sure to take good care of it until the opening of the Charmony Festival. Then, when the show reaches its climax, press the button together with the others around you. <laughs> you never know. Something very exciting might happen. Listen, I love you, but I don't want you to blow up the train gang. In the meantime... We're back to where it all began. You entered the golden hour from this place. And it is also from here where you will enter the true Pentacone. Never leave me again, please. It is a pleasure to journey alongside you once more. But it's time I laid bare the entire truth before you. As you might have heard, I also go by another name. Stellaron Hunter Sam. Are you alright? You lied to me? Are you Firefly Soul? Not a hill with all that. You dashed a boo boo boo. I'm fine. Sorry, I hope I haven't scared you. You broke my heart. I know you have many questions. Do you remember when we encountered death in that strange dreamscape? When I was caught by that meme? In that instant before it killed me? I saw the reflection of another dreamscape in its ghastly pupils. So, following the clues in the script, I came up with some theories about the meme. That's why I instructed Silverwolf to issue invitations. Drawing everyone to the dreams hotel i intended to call upon death before you arrived to solve the riddle using more direct means and then invite you to join however 
Contrary to my wishes, I couldn't defy the script. And I, I didn't get a chance to explain it to you. Elio just got y'all whipped. It is how you see now. I was impaled by the bladed wings of death. The heavy pressure of concentrated memoria miasma exploded in my mind as if it was actually reality. But after the momentary numbness subsided, I found that my body was absolutely unscathed. Yo, shout out to Robin. I was still alive. And it was just as I thought. I, I had arrived at a place starkly different from this beautiful dream. Beneath the dreamscape of Panacone lies another, more chaotic, more primal memory zone. Its name? Land of the Exiles. And so, uh, then I returned to the hotel in the dreamscape, hoping to tell you of its existence. Yet I, I, I could not reveal my own identity. So, I could only divert your party's attention and lure you away from the battlefield. Yo, that bat is not enough to fight a Power Ranger. And after... All my attempts proved futile. It wasn't until not long ago when a crimson blade of light shattered the high wall of the dream, causing you all to fall far into the abyssal depths of the dreamscape, that I was able to awaken you and your companions one by one. And, and that's it. That is all that's happened so far. I completely understand. I'm completely confused. Now nah, I'm listening. <laughs> No, it's tough to believe all this without reservations. I just want to say, you are very close to the final answer. Just one more thing needs to be done. And then I can prove it to you. Prove what? Now, let's leave this place. Please close your eyes. Okay. Take a deep breath and visualize the dreamscape's outline in your heart. And remember, you must not open your eyes at all times. Three, two, one. Don't be afraid. The one who has come to greet us has arrived. Yo, what the hell was that noise? I feel like I'm being inducted into a cult now. After a piercing screech, a thick and ferocious surge of memoria crashes into your chest, churning and ravaging. Your consciousness becomes like scraps of paper caught in a whirlpool, breaking apart, dissolving, and dispersing within the turbulent, muddy current. Innumerable voices resonated through the symphony of memoria like roaring thunder, and among them, one echo stood out with exceptional clarity. You knew it came from the girl beside you, your hearts beating to the same rhythm, peaceful, and even more peaceful, until in that quiet darkness, memories ripple into existence. Dot dot dot, what the hell is happening? Firefly, please hold me. I never knew you could do this. I said hold me, not Blade. What the hell is this? Hmm. Do you have a driver's license? I do. I bought us a cut of surprise. That is... surprising. Why? Because this is Chapella, the city of sins. <laughs> no, it's nothing. I'm just thinking that you haven't slept in 20 system hours. Are you sure you're okay? I'm fine. I'll survive. Same goes for you. <laughs> oh, wait, she has the same markings. I'm not so sure about that. Slow down a bit. Infiltration is over. Feel free to activate Sam anytime you like. There's still some time before the next part of the script unfolds. Let me stay a little longer in this body. Oh. A long silence ensued. Neither of them brought up any topic, seemingly accustomed to the silence. It wasn't until much later that a soft sigh once again broke the quiet in the car. Such a long tunnel. Didn't feel this long when I set off. In half a system hour, it will lead us to Kafka. And then comes the downfall of the Chapella Brotherhood. Oh, this is the prologue to the trailer. I, is that also part of the script? It's in your script, too. Sorry. 
I didn't notice. You're just not gonna read the plan? <laughs> Their destiny won't change just because of your selective ignorance. <sighs> I told you before, it's a bad habit. What about you then? Is this the moment you finally find the death you've been looking for? As always, it's a blank slate. It's not on this planet. Why the sudden inquiry? Because I'm currently in a car with a sleep-deprived driver. I just want to get there in one piece. Yo, do not kill this waifu, bruh. <sighs> this car has full self-driving capabilities. I'll just put my hand on the steering wheel. Will that do? What the hell then? What's the point of your driver's license? You don't even need it. <laughs> hey, don't take everything so seriously. Elio would always say there's only one type of destiny. The inescapable type. He can see the future and we, likewise, are aware of our predetermined end. But before that moment arrives, we can still choose what we do. We all have this right, don't we? After today, Chapella's name will disappear from cosmic history, and the Everflame Mansion will take its place. In the not too distant future, you'll receive an invitation. That's your next stop. Land of the Dreams. Panacone. I hope you find whatever you seek there. Be it answers, or salvation. No, no death flag. She live, please. Glad to see you're safe and sound. The hell, you're here too? Mr. Yang, you're here too. I just said that. Close your eyes. This is the answer. Isn't it incredible? The monster that we have always known as death is actually the guardian of the land of the exiles. It abides by a certain rule. Abducting people from their dreams and bringing them here. Abducts them by putting a knife in their chest? I mean, okay. The question that has been perplexing us, does death really exist in the dreamscape, appears to be a cognitive trap. It was laid by those orchestrating events from the shadows to cover up the truth behind the disappearances and the existence of this fortress known as Dreamflux Reef. Every emergence of that meme is related to the Watchmaker. Since Dreamflux Reef is where it brings its captives, it's likely that many of our long-standing questions will be answered in this place. The atmosphere here is starkly different from the beautiful dream. There are no regulators here like the family. And they all look like they're mildly dazed. Wait a minute, but then how did the rest of us even get here? Wait, did May kill everybody? But from the whispers of the residents, they've heard a familiar name. Gallagher. Uh-oh. It's that man again. Always in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Though that does save us the trouble of looking for him. Himiko and March have already made a move. Get ready. We're about to set off. Let's go. The atmosphere in this fortress is uh, pretty different from that in the beautiful dream. It feels like we've walked into the underworld. When I first saw it, I was in awe too. The sky here, it's like a reflection of the 12 dreamscapes. What's even more bizarre is that this place is also separated into trade and residential areas. The layout may be simple, but the facilities are very comprehensive. It seems that there are quite a number of people living here. Hmm. Though both dreamscapes have distinct styles, the architectural designs are quite similar. Works of the same hand, perhaps. Hard not to speculate on the connection. But there's no point in overthinking things. Let's meet up with Himiko and the others first. Nah, we should think about this some more. Take a right turn at the end of this road and you'll reach the Trade District. There are more people there. And perhaps someone knows where she is. 
not coming with us? The Astral Express likely needs room for some internal deliberation. In the meantime, I'll try and locate Gallagher. No, stop leaving. Just stay. I want you here. Sure. Let's reconnect later. God dang it. Letting her go was the right decision. No. Further observations are needed before we decide whether to trust her. But first, there is someone I need to talk to. Wait, is that Misha in the back? Let's go. I'm sure you've already noticed him. Yep, I saw him right away. He's right over there. The Reverie Hotel's bellboy. How did he end up here? And right after Miss Acheron severed the beautiful dream. We'd better check, just to be sure. Yo, clock, you better not be a god in disguise or something. Huh? You were the guest from before. <laughs> we meet again! And a new friend. Uh, forgot to introduce myself. I'm the hotel's bellboy, Misha. Hello, Misha. I'm Welt. We met in a dream. Oh. And who might this be? A master manipulator. Tick tock! Old friend and new friend! Let's high five! Mr. Yang, you're still young at heart. Your, um, memory zone meme? <laughs> nope. Clocky is a good friend of mine. We all live here. How did you two get here? This dreamscape isn't supposed to be open to the public. I wonder if it has something to do with Sleepy. Ooh. So this is your home? Yep. After my work in the beautiful dream ends, I'll go back home. Commuting used to be more convenient, but ever since travel became cumbersome, Sleepy started ferrying people back and forth between the two dreamscapes. This Sleepy, can you describe what it looks like? Sleepy is a memory zone meme. Looks fierce and has many eyes. But it's actually really well behaved. Gallagher's been taking care of it. Dude, that thing is way too freaky to have a name that cute. I can't deal with this. This description, could it be? Based on the description, that meme is indisputably death. A nightmare for the family, but for the people who live here, well, that couldn't be further from the truth. What's the saying? Sleep is the cousin of death? D Death? Not in a dream, surely. Sleepy's just a little aggressive, and sometimes messes up by fetching the wrong guess. But it would never hurt anyone. Tell that to my firefly. I see. Has it brought back any guests recently? Say, in the last day or two? We're currently investigating a missing person case that occurred within the beautiful dream. I see. Then you'll have to speak with Gallagher. But he's currently busy hosting a visitor from the Oak family and specifically asked not to be disturbed. Yo, that's Robin! Um, Mr. Yang, the person you're looking for, is it Miss Robin? Mm, just as I thought. Considering what happened with Miss Firefly, this doesn't come as a surprise. Yo, we got to do something! If you're looking for Miss Robin, I can lead the way. She told me that she'd be willing to meet with outside guests. If it's not too much trouble. Also, we're looking for our missing companions. Uh, a woman with red hair accompanied by a girl with pink hair. Have you seen them? Oh, I... I haven't. But please, rest assured. Dream Flux Reef is a small place, and it's not as bustling as the beautiful dream. But its safety is unmatched. Wait a minute, so Robin was just down here chilling the whole time? Uh, how about this? Since it's your first time here in Dream Flux Reef, I'll be your guide and help you find your companions. And then we can all go visit Miss Robin together. She's gone to Mrs. Grace's to visit the children. She won't be leaving anytime soon. So there should be enough time. All right then, we'll uh, follow your plan. Well, we now know the answer to both murder cases that have caused such commotion in Penaconi. As for the intentions of the mastermind behind it all, we're still none the wiser. Yeah, we screwed as hell. That name, Sleepy. Uh, no idea. But its connection to Gallagher is worth digging into. Regardless, we have to find him. 
Say, you mentioned before that you saw a clocky that only you could see, right? Yeah, he's right here. I can't shake off this strange feeling. Am I really still so young at heart? Well, you are not about to make me call you cute, bro. We're not doing this today. Forget it. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, we'd better just follow Misha. Yeah, maybe we should. Everyone, look! From here, you can see the most spectacular view of Dreamflux Reef. Bro, that is a hole. A black hole? No. An accretion disk formed from consolidated memoria? Was Dreamflux Reef built on such unstable memoria? Oh, so Mr. Yang is also versed in memoria dynamics. I was just trying to figure out how to explain this huge hole to everyone. I bet you guys have a lot in common with Miss Kami. Who the hell is Kami and why is she a hole expert? My calculations are finally done. In another 10 system hours, the above dream will swallow the dream below. My hypothesis was correct. This place will cease to exist as the dream devours everything. Um, no. No, no, no. Hmm? Who are you all and why haven't you left yet? This place is about to disappear. Wait, you have the halo. Who the hell are you? I'm Kami, a dreamscape surveyor specializing in memoria dynamics. And this is my life's work that I'm researching. See that huge gaping hole? It was just a narrow rift many years ago. But now, it's grown into a giant hole. The surrounding memoria has been flowing towards the other end of the hole at a constant velocity, slowly but surely. But the scary part is... According to my calculations, the flow rate of Memoria has recently changed, and it's faster than ever before. It's almost, almost as if something is sucking it in from the other side. Well, I know a thing or two about sucking myself. Maybe I could help you. By constantly improving upon Madame Rosalina's Memoria measurement method, I've finally obtained accurate results. After 10 system hours, the Dreamflux Reap will cease to exist. Just like the melting of glaciers, everything will crumble and disintegrate. The dreams on that side of the void will fuse into one. Wait a second, do I have 10 hours to live? Uh, please don't worry. This sort of thing has happened many times before. Miss Kami isn't a bad person. She's just a bit lost in her own world. She'll probably realize she's wrong soon enough. I'm scared, please help me. <laughs> You don't say. There was a something else that piqued my interest. Who is Madame Rosalina? Oh, do you know her too? Or are you also a fan of Memoria Dynamics? We're very interested in Madame Rosalina's achievements. Uh, could you tell us a little more about them? Why, of course. She's an excellent scholar of Memoria Dynamics and the first person to apply Memoria Rate Measurement Methodology on interstellar travelers. Regrettably, due to the presence of the Garden of Recollection, ordinary people don't pay much attention to the nature of Memoria. She departed this world without much fame, leaving only a few thin journals behind. I came to Panacone to learn more about my idol, and went to great lengths to seek out Dreamflux Reef, all because this is her final resting place. Prodigies always meet their demise prematurely. If only Madame Rosalina had more time, she would have discovered a way to reverse the flow of Memoria. I felt it. The source is in the Golden Hour. There is a certain anomalous presence stirring the currents of the Memory Zone. I must uncover more concrete proof. I must convince everyone. Does the name Madame Rosalina sound familiar to you? It was one of the nameless mentioned by the conductor? Wait, Pom Pom told me? That's right. It seems like she did a great deal of research and calculations in Dreamflux Reef before abruptly passing away. And people just be dying lately. Miss Kami regularly mentions her. I hear Madame Rosalina passed away during the prison war. <sighs> she could see the Panacone of today. It's people building homes in the memory zone. <laughs> I bet she'd be really happy. Perhaps. I saw you gonna say, Will. Ghost! There's a ghost! Don't come near me! Oh my. I'm human and so are you. 
Can you get a grip? Marge, you alive? Uh, Mr. Yang and Miss Trailblazer, I've been waiting for you. Quickly, come help. I bumped into a member of the family on the way here. He was so scared, and I just wanted to calm him down. But... Let me go, let me go! I've only done good in my life. Why can't I rest in peace after death? Dude, why are the Pepsi kids so weird? Well, this is how it turned out. Now you shall pay your respect to March 7th, Ghost of Dreamflux Reef. Uh, me? A ghost? Don't make me hit you. Do it, I'm waiting. He thinks he's dead. Although, when I first fell in, I also thought the same. Dear guest, this is not the afterlife. This is Dreamflux Reef. That's right. Did you hear that? Repeat after me. Dream Flux Reef. You... You're talking to someone invisible. If I'm not dead, what am I? <laughs> I shouldn't have pushed my luck and tried sleeping in my dream. Curiosity kills the Papushi. Wait, they can't see Misha either? Invisible who? Stop asking! You'll alert the monsters! All the dead are right here. All of them! Uh, you're not talking about the Memory Zone meme, are you? Uh, don't say that name! It's all your fault. They're coming! Wait, what? Oh, it's a fight? Oh, hell no! He passed out. His intense negative emotions attracted the nearby Memory Zone memes. Just throw them in the trash, it's right there. I see. But why aren't the other people around here scared? Unlike in the Sweet Dream, people here don't see Memory Zone memes as dangerous monsters. And even if they pose a threat, people can easily escape by forcing a wake-up call. But we can't just leave this man here. Can we take him somewhere safe? The garbage can. Evening, Jesse. Um, is it evening? It's always evening here. Welcome, Miss March. Who might these be? Uh, these two are my friends. As for the man lying on the ground, uh, he's a scaredy cat who fainted from fright. <laughs> I see. Another poor guy who accidentally ended up here. I'll take care of him. There have been a lot of new faces lately. Things must be tough in the beautiful dream. Hmm. The few remaining havens of freedom in Asdana will soon face trouble. Do such things often happen here? Not really, but they're becoming more frequent now. Guess it's one of the signs of the sweet dream's collapse. This man has had quite the shock. Could you help me find a Halovian lady march? Her songs can heal mental wounds. Robin! A Halovian lady? That must be Robin. She's also here in Dreamflux Reef. Huh? Robin? But I thought she... Oh, right. If Firefly is here safe and sound, then it means Robin must be okay too. Misha is about to take us to her to find out what happened. But before that, let's meet up with Himako. You were with her earlier, right? We met some stowaways in the residential area. Most of them came from neighboring star systems. I heard that places like Dreamflux Reef are scattered throughout the memory zone of Asdana, like islands in the ocean. They existed before the family arrived. I also heard that when Dreamflux Reef took shape, it was the center of all dreamscapes in Penacony. If that's true, it's no wonder there are so many similarities between this place and the Sweet Dream. Wait, so was the Golden Hour real? Himeko must be gathering information. Let's hurry up and get going! He may! So that's how it is. I never imagined we'd gather the remaining details here. So who the hell is this walking piece of testosterone? <laughs> <laughs> to borrow Gallagher's catchphrase, what an unpredictable twist of fate. Himeko, here they are! Ah, oh, perfect timing. Now that everyone's here, I'd like to introduce everyone to Micah, who's partly in charge of the Land of the Exiles. Micah, these are my companions. Dude, I can't trust that name again after Red Dead. It's a pleasure to meet the Nameless. You know us? I've been keeping an eye on you since the day you arrived in Penacony. We would have met under more appropriate circumstances if Dreamflux Reef hadn't been isolated from the 12 Dreamscapes. 
please, allow me to formally introduce myself. I'm Micah, the Gravekeeper of Dreamflux Reef. Gravekeeper? Oh, hell no. Gravekeeper? Life in Dreamflux Reef is pretty liberating. Everyone here mostly keeps to themselves, without meddling in others' affairs. My daily task involves cleaning a few tombstones. Stay away from my march. You're too modest, Micah. When lost dream chasers stumble upon this place, you're the one who takes care of them, guiding them back to the sweet dream, or showing them how to survive the wild dream chaos. So, a uh, guardian of sorts. Hmm? Uh, were you talking to me, Mr. Yang? No, you. Hmm? Hmm? What the hell's going on here? On that note, Mr. Mika, uh, which tombstones are you referring to? We didn't come across any graveyard when we arrived. <laughs> They're actually just symbolic stones. But since you're curious, Mr. Yang, I'll take you there. I have a feeling you might find something of interest there. Uh, but before that, you have an important guest joining you. It better be Robin. <laughs> Everyone sang so wonderfully. It's not often that I tried this music style. But I've gained some valuable insights from it. Finally, she's here! Oh, I can't thank you enough, Robin. Well, these kids have made incredible progress in only a few days. It was nothing, Grace. I merely taught them how to sing. It was you who brought hope into their lives. No, 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 no. Stop being perfect. Life must be quite difficult for them in reality, I imagine. That's right. Whenever it's time to say goodbye to these kids, they're reluctant to leave. But I've explored every corner of Dreamflux Reef, talked to everyone I met, and they all told me the same thing. This shattered dream is not worth clinging to. It's always a good day for a healthy dose of nihilism. <laughs> it seems you truly are a child of the Harmony. Emma and Andy are orphans I took under my wing. Carol there, with her blind eyes, used to work at a nutrition center in the outer ring of Penacone. And as for Gary, he's been living with autism since he was a child. They're not old enough to enter the sweet dream managed by the family. If we compare people to birds, these kids are like fledglings with impaired wings. But in this dream, well, they can fly freely, even if they stumble along the way. Well, they're still relying on their own strength. And me, an old lady with no legs. Well, without this dream, I couldn't even walk toward them. I'm glad that you found a new life here in Penacony. It's just... Don't worry, Robin. Dreams have their significance, but they aren't everything. Both the children and I understand this. No matter how long we fly through this dream, we will one day return to reality. Dude, I wish Robin could fly. But you know what? Emma and Gary aren't plagued by their insecurities anymore. No, and Carol is learning how to cope with her blindness. And Andy is livelier than ever. Well, even I've become more optimistic. You see, in dreams, we learn how to live. Once we return to reality, we learn how to survive. And should our feathers be damaged, then we share our wings with one another. There's no need to covet an illusory sky in dreams, because we have the right and the ability to fly towards a broader horizon. It's a relief to see you safe and sound, Miss Robin. Does her halo have flowers on it? It's nice to see you all again, Astral Express crew. I heard my disappearance cause quite the commotion out there. I'm really sorry about that. Since you're here, can we assume that you're fully aware of the situation in Penacony? Ever since I returned to Penacony, my voice started to change until it gradually faded away. At first, I thought it was a temporary ailment, perhaps due to having been away too long. I thought maybe it'd just take some time for my body to acclimate to the high concentration of memory in Asdana. But now it seems... the root of the problem goes way beyond me. There are elements around me that don't align with the harmony. And losing my voice 
It's just one of the signs of the sweet dreams collapse. Yo, we gotta fix her throat then. The sweet dreams collapse? That memo keeper mentioned the same thing. So it's real. While I was away from Penacony, the boundaries of the 12 dreamscapes kept expanding outward. But whenever I mentioned the anomalies in my dreams, all the family heads refused to talk about it. Only my brother was willing to respond. Later, I discovered the secret letters from the IPC ambassador, which further convinced me that there are hidden secrets beneath the surface of Penacony. So, following the clues in the Oak family's dossiers, I found my way here. Yes, by getting your titties punched in. The land of the exiles, concealed by the family under the guise of death. A dream within a dream, where Penacony's past is buried. Hearing you speak, it sounds as if your voice has made somewhat of a recovery. I hate to admit it, but the harmony in this place resonates more broadly than within the sweet dream. It's regrettable, but the family has experienced betrayal. The traitor, or traitors, abandoned their original principles and, using the name of harmony, Exploited people's weaknesses to turn Penacony into the planet of festivities. Trapping everyone in the illusion of the sweet dream. Wait, so this place is the real Penacony? This is not the strong defending the weak. But rather the strong exploiting the weak. A world without equality won't ever be favored by the Harmony. And naturally, those voices blessed by them have lost the ability to sing. Could there be another force influencing the family's shift in philosophy, Miss Robin? Considering what happened with Acheron, it's difficult to conceive of another entity within the realm of the Harmony capable of influencing everyone. Unless a power surpassing that of an Emanator is involved. Wait, so another god itself? <sighs> I'd heard about what happened to the Sienjo Alliance, but as far as I'm aware, the family hasn't faced any such external interventions. Who knows? Perhaps I've just been away too long and missed something. Regardless, I cannot accept my home is moving towards the very opposite of what the Harmony represents, while still claiming to uphold it. I must uncover the reason why Mikhail cut ties with the family, and who exactly it was who betrayed us all. Do you remember our arrangement, Mr. Micah? Well, here's my answer. Dude, I just want to know who Mikhail is. I've decided to forgo my role and never step foot on the Charmony Festival stage again. What? You just gonna quit? Look here, brother. A little bird. Birds are cute when they're still babies and they don't doo-doo on you. Looks like a fledgling Charmony dove. But Charmony doves don't live here. So how did this little bird get here? Maybe its parents abandoned it? It looks weak and frail. Why don't we find something soft and make a nest for it? This place is too dangerous for a fledgling. Let's take it with us. We can put it on the wooden shelf in front of your window. Okay. A bird like that must have a beautiful singing voice. But where will it live? Is this supposed to be some kind of foreshadowing? I'll ask the family head to build a cage for it. A cage? But then it won't have the freedom to fly, right? Let's see. What is it that has captured the attention of the two best interpreters of the Great One? To the point that they've forgotten how to enjoy their dessert. The Great One? Why am I getting Bloodborne vibes? Oh, poor little thing. Doesn't look like it's doing well. Do you want to rescue it? I do, but I don't want to lock it up in a cage. Why? Even if it's small and not fully feathered and can't sing, it didn't come into this world just to be locked up in a cage. Birds, they should be flying free in the sky. <laughs> That's quite the romantic idea. And what about you, a young scholar? 
Do you agree with your sister? Yo, this kind voice does not sound kind. You sound evil as hell. I think she's right. But if we leave it out in the wild, it won't survive for more than a few days at best. Ah, I see. It seems our little scholar is still a bit unsure. Well, let me tell you youngsters a story. As you probably know, Charmony doves can fly through the air. When they fly really high, the friction caused by the flapping of their feathers against the atmosphere creates amazing lights so that they look like shooting stars. We've seen this spectacle so many times that we think it's just something they can naturally do. But that's not the truth. Their radiant display is the result of countless struggles against nature over generations. Their ancestors were too weak to survive on the ground. So, to escape predators, they started seeking new opportunities in the air. After countless attempts by many generations, one of them finally figured out how to fly. It soared into the sky and never looked back at the ground again. So, you mean, birds aren't born to fly, but they find a way to do it through their determination, right? Well, that's an idealistic way of putting it. So, what are your thoughts, Sunday? I... I think people believe birds are meant to fly because they've never seen those birds crashing to their death. Yo, Sunday, chill. Why are you ruining the moment? That's an interesting perspective. So, have you decided what to do with the bird now? For now, I'll keep it in a cage until it can take care of itself because I, I want it to live. No matter what. Well said, kids. It seems each of you has found your own answer. Your insights are truly remarkable. And I hope they come true in their own way. We will take good care of it, won't we, brother? <sighs> yeah. But, Mr. Gopherwood? There's one thing I don't quite understand. There is no way in hell this evil ass voice is named Gopher Wood. And what might that be, my son? What if this little Charmony dove never learns to fly in the end? I mean, if there are fledglings in this world that can never fly throughout their lives, should we let them go back to the sky? Only to see them crash to the ground and die? Talking in your sleep, Birdie? <laughs> Time to wake up. <sighs> Wait, Sunday's here too? Oh, right, Gallagher just murked him. I forgot about that part. Yo, welcome back, bruh. Huh? Need a hand? I'm still alive? Yeah. Happy about that. Where is Robin? Tell me. Now. Heh. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the first thing you'd ask. Don't worry, your sister is here, safe and sound. She's probably walking around the streets now. If I were you, I'd be more worried about myself. <laughs> After all, right in front of you is the guy who just stabbed you in the chest with a dagger. If you wanted to kill me, you wouldn't give me the chance to speak. Just tell me your demands. Lackey of the Watchmaker. Yo, why are you so mean? He just brought you to your sister. So, you figured out who I am, huh? No wonder you had the guts to go against the Dream Master and the four families. Looks like I made the right choice. Choice? You are aware of my plan and see through my act. Time is running out, so let's drop the charades. I'm suggesting we cooperate. Cooperate? What makes you think I'd cooperate with you? Sunday, stop being so uptight, bruh. You got no leverage right now. Just do something. Mm. The fact that the famous Robin has chosen my side. Plus, some clues about a traitor and a 
bright future for Penacone. Any of that catch your interest? I find it hard to believe a man who's full of deception. Fine. You don't have to trust me. What you should trust is the sense of justice inside of you. Show me Robin first. All right, as you wish. Here she is. Huh? But, but, no, that is the wrong Robin. What's your trick this time? <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, this lady will lead us to Robin, right? And the crew, too. There are too many people who you owe an explanation. <laughs> That'd be great. Please follow me, Honorable Oak Family Head. Now, all the actors are on the stage. Moments later. This is the monument I mentioned earlier. The names inscribed on it should be familiar to all of you. Bruh, I can't read this. Rosalina and Tiernan. Oh, the three nameless, except the third one's gone. When Penacone was known as a frontier prison, it was the trailblazers who connected it with the stars. They were the heroes who saved us, Donna, and their names deserve to be immortalized. Not just on this small stone tablet, but in the annals of history for all of time. However, today, the planet of festivities is nothing but sweet dreams. That heavy piece of history is all a distant memory. Just like that prison. If their names are inscribed here, then that means... According to Micah, they died long ago. But what about the third one? Rosalina was killed during the War of Independence. She ventured alone into the heart of the star system to investigate the flow of Memoria, but she never returned. Tiernan was a skilled gunslinger, strong and reliable. He led the people through countless battles, but he didn't live long enough to witness the arrival of true peace. In the decade following the war, Penagoni faced challenges internal and external. To protect Asdana, Tiernan took up the way of the Trailblaze and led the Lantmoth family to explore beyond the system, only to be surrounded and wiped out by the swarm. The swarm again? Nobody got pesticides in this universe? Though I had expected as much, the tales of these heroes truly are sorrowful. True to the title of Trailblazer, they spent their lives venturing into the unknown. But what about this tablet? There are no names carved on it. When Dreamflux Reef was created, its owner was still alive. However, he insisted on erecting a monument for himself, saying that it will happen someday. I mean, he's not wrong, but it's kind of dark as hell. Here we meet again. Everyone from the Astral Express. Robin. And me, yay. I promised to give the siblings some privacy, so let's talk about our business first. What do you say? That sounds sensible enough. Since you went through the trouble of gathering the family head, the crew, and the Stellaron hunters, I'm guessing you have something important to say, Mr. Gallagher? Oh, is it that obvious? You have got to be kidding me. The look on your face is practically screaming, I'm the one behind all this. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Yang. It is indeed time to come clean on everything. The siblings already know what they need to, and they've made their choice. But you, Nameless, arrived a bit late. So it's only fair that I answer your questions. Before we begin, let me reintroduce myself. I'm the founder of Dreamflux Reef, the deputy of the Watchmaker, and... The one who sent out that invitation. As Gallagher, the history fictionologist, I humbly extend my greetings to you all. History fictionologist? So what, everything you told us was made up? Well, don't worry. What? Almost everything I shared was true. Well, except for the part about the family accepting me back. Uh, I mean, I said it was fiction, but don't worry about that part. I double-checked with Micah. And everything he said about the family, the Watchmaker, and Mikhail is true. Thank you for your understanding. Now let's get down to business. 
I'm sure you're all wondering why I went through the trouble of setting up this battle for the legacy. Inviting different factions and stirring up a ruckus all over Penacone. Well, it all boils down to something very familiar to all of you. The Stellaron. You talking about me? The Stellaron? But how is that possible? Penacone is a free-flowing interstellar hub. There are no signs of contamination whatsoever. Oh, there's another one. Never mind. You're totally correct. So, care to take a guess at what that means? You're pulling our leg again. The sweet dream doesn't come out of thin air. If you think of the memory zone as the sea, creating the land of the dreams is like filling that wild ocean with earth to make an island. To achieve this feat, without the help of an emanator of remembrance or enigmata, the only way is to use a Stellaron. And that's not something you can achieve with a simple wish. It requires vast quantities of knowledge, time, and manpower. I'm sure you get what I'm hinting at. In Asdana, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster. The whole planet? What? Uh, the planet of festivities itself is a Stellaron disaster? It all started a long time ago, back when the Watchmaker and his crew liberated the Frontier Prison. They faced countless challenges as they began building Penacone from the ground up. That's when the idea of using the Stellaron came into play. The Stellaron first entered the Azdana system during the war. The Nameless warned everyone against the folly of attempting to tamper with such a power, and most heeded their words. But there are always people in the shadows with ulterior motives. The turning point came after Tiernan's death. With two of the Nameless gone, the Watchmaker had to go to the front lines. It was at that moment his rival saw an opportunity. By the time a representative from the Montour system's family arrived at the Watchmaker's call, the Stellaron had already been activated and was seeping into the primordial synesthesia dreamscape. And I suppose the family happened to possess the knowledge to seal the Stellaron? Not just that. They knew far more about the Stellaron than the average person. They helped Mikhail swiftly quell the civil unrest and played a part in building Penacone under the disguise of the Harmony. Oh, so Robin couldn't feel the Harmony because of the contamination. Those three eras were known as the Age of Dreaming. The Watchmaker, who had been left in the dark, sent out invitations across the universe, spreading the hype around the land of the dreams. Then, how did they turn against each other? Remember the island in the ocean metaphor? The truth is, the Stellaron was never truly sealed. It existed in a different form within the dreamscape. Think about this. What would it cost to create and maintain such a lavish dreamland? People? It's people's lives. The opulent dream is built upon the decay of spirits, with a toxic elixir called pleasure flowing through the dreamscape. It tempts people to indulge in the dreamscape, and gradually their minds succumb becoming nourishment for the sweet dream. I mean, pleasure is pretty dangerous, I'll agree with you. Confusion, laziness, and cowardice. Weaknesses that plague humanity were magnified and nourished by the family. Panacone became a new kind of prison, even more impenetrable than the previous one. Sadly, we realized this far too late. By then, the family had a firm grip on Panacone, swiftly quelling any opposition that arose. At my wit's end, I had to use the power of the Enigmata and sought refuge in this chaotic realm. Over the years, I created a meme within this dream for our use. Dormancy. That's its real name. We exploited a loophole. You see, regular people can't fall asleep again while they are inside the dreamscape. So this is the true meaning of the impossible. You sent out invitations in the Watchmaker's name to find forces capable of resolving the Stellaron disaster and draw them into Penacone to uncover the truth. Also, Gallagher really is a good guy. He scared the hell out of me in the last quest. It's not just that. Above all, I wanted to see what happens when the major factions engage in a struggle for the legacy. Since this is the Watchmaker's first announcement in decades, 
the traitor within the family is bound to reveal themselves. Yo, it's gotta be that gopher wood dude. So, the legacy is just a facade. Hmm. If you want to consider the Stellaron as the legacy, I'm totally fine with that. If that's the case, where is the Stellaron now? That's a question for Mr. Wings. The Stellaron is still under the family's control, and as the head of the Oak family, I'm sure he holds all the answers. Nope, do not trust an angel man. Are you done talking? So, will you tell us where the Stellaron is? <laughs> Open your damn mouth! It is the Panacone Grand Theater itself. Ohio? As I suspected, it's the embodiment of the family. The edifice that first materialized within the Sweet Dream. That's what turned Panacone into its current state. As for the person who employed its power, it is in fact Mr. Gopherwood, the current Dream Master. That name is just so ridiculous. Well, that was easier than I thought. Did you conduct your own investigation already? Correct. When I was trying to track down the person who murdered my sister, apart from you, Gopherwood was my second suspect. Wait, if Gopherwood is the Dream Master, then who's the watchmaker? Yo, I want some drip! Confronting me first turned out to be a smart move on your part. I didn't have other options. The Dream Master has been elusive, and even the heads of the families can hardly get an audience with him. Moreover, Mr. Gopherwood has been kind to my sister and me. And I didn't want it all to end like this. What do you mean by that? To be honest, my brother and I are also victims of the cancer of all worlds. We grew up as orphans, and were adopted by the family when they came to help. Mr. Gopher Wood recognized our potential and brought us to Penacony. But I can't just stand by and watch Mr. Gopher Wood become an enemy of the Harmony. I won't use my voice to support an evil cause. I won't step on that stage and sing. No matter who the traitor is, or what orders they give me. I won't let the Charmony Festival become an event that destroys Harmony itself. Or the paradise in our dreams. Indeed. For the paradise in our dreams. As the head of the Oak family, I'm responsible for ensuring Panacone's promising future. Robin and I will head into the sweet dream and confront the Dream Master. And if it turns out that the family has truly strayed from the Harmony, I'll fight alongside you. We'll put the Charmony Festival on hold and make sure Mr. Gopherwood pays for his blood debt. Ninjas, I'm just saying, I've got to see this man. The enemies you are about to face aren't like this old dog here who can barely even bark. Bruh, you stab people. Since our interests are aligned, why don't we team up? Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a shot at success. Just maybe? We have always been following in the footsteps of our nameless predecessors, and there's no reason to stop now. <laughs> yeah, we nameless won't back down from a challenge. Isn't that right, Miss Trailblazer? Going up against the Dream Master? Nah, I'd surrender. Come on, don't crack jokes at such a serious moment. And I ain't joking, I'm scared. Rest assured, sitting on the sidelines isn't in our nature. Mr. Sunday, Miss Robin, I'm willing to accompany you on behalf of the Astral Express. Having a third party present should help with negotiations. And could make all the difference if things get ugly. I don't know, it took May to survive just fighting a Venturine last time and she's gone now. I think we screwed. Thank you, Mr. Yang. Thank you all very much. The Charmony Festival is about to start, and time is against us. We must hasten. So are we just not gonna talk to Firefly anymore? What's going on, bro? I may have been quick to step up to the plate, but confronting the Dream Master could be a very dangerous affair. You think? Uh-huh. Even you're saying that, Mr. Yang? Uh, how powerful is that Dream Master? He's the leader of the families of Pentagoni and he has the entire power of the Harmony behind him. Not to mention the Stellaron in his possession. We must proceed with great caution. Maybe you can just stay behind this time, Mr. Yang? 
No, that won't do. Even if we count Robin as an ally, something felt off about Mr. Sunday just now. Although, I can't quite put my finger on it. I have to make sure he won't turn against us when things start to get dicey. You see what I'm saying, ninjas? You don't trust the angels. You're still carrying the keepsake the IPC envoy gave you, right? May I borrow it for a moment? Wait, what is this? Oh, it's a Venturine's little coin. Go on ahead and keep it. Huh. I knew it. What do you need it for? As I suspected, this chip a Venturine gave to you is actually a miniature transmitter. If I'm right, he intends to use it to track your location or contact you when needed. As it so happens, this may actually be of some use in the current situation. He put a GPS tracker on me? A Venturine? Is he still alive? And what does he have to do with our mission to confront the Dream Master? Remember what I said earlier? Working with the IPC is a way to keep the family in check. If negotiations go south and the family show their true colors by going after the Stellaron, I'll use this transmitter to send a message to the IPC. It'll be just the opportunity the IPC ambassador was hoping for. What, so Jade and Topass are gonna save us? The only question mark in all of this is Venturine's current status. But the IPC is always listening, especially senior strategic investment department heads like him. Getting the message across shouldn't be a problem. Good luck to you, Welt. Well, you take care too. If anything goes wrong, don't worry about me. Just make sure to seal the Stellaron. Don't go! Spoken like a true hero. Even if the Dream Master is innocent, the family's corruption runs deep. I won't make the same mistake Mikhail did. Let's wish him the best of luck. Don't you have something else to tell us, Gallagher? Why would you say so? Before we departed, the Conductor asked us to inquire about the three Nameless in Penacony. We've already collected intel about Rosalina and Tiernan, so the only one left is Lakework. If I'm not mistaken, we've already met him somewhere, haven't we? Hmm. It's not enough to say meet, but the answer is pretty obvious. After all, I've hinted at it in quite an evident way. I've been watching over you ever since I received the reply from the Astral Express, and I've seen the great effort you all put into linking different realms together across the cosmos. And now, after getting this far all in one piece, you have truly proven yourselves. Wait, so legwork is Mikhail? Miss Himiko, were you the one who repaired the Express and got it sailing through the cosmos again? Yes. And you two, young Nameless, you have very interesting life stories and extraordinary skills. Ha, uh, of course. My reputation precedes me. Believe in the galactic baseballer supremacy. Oh, God dang it, Stella. What? Uh, hey, you can't just make up titles like that. Listen, who's the MC here? <laughs> You're full of energy. Please send my regards to the conductor, Pom Pom. Please let them know that their friend had fond memories from his time aboard the Express, which he reminisce on every time he had a good drink. As for the last Nameless, he embarked, disembarked, and embarked again, traveling in a great circle, ending up back where he started. On his deathbed, he told me to find the Astral Express and deliver an invitation to the future Nameless. He left behind a special gift, a true legacy. Something that belongs only to the successors of the Trailblaze. Come with me. Now is the time to reveal it. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Uh, back here again. Sometimes I feel like you're still alive, old friend. Like you've still got so much to say and do. You didn't even write his name down? I've kept my promise. Brought the future Trailblazers you've waited so long for. I don't know why you were so obsessed with that train, but I remember your last words. Don't let us down, old man. Wait, wait, wait. what is the sound? What's happening? Uh, what's happening? A cutscene.
Yo, we go, what up? What, 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 what? The whole city's raising? Theater. Go ahead. His resting place lies in the garden up ahead. The first and last nameless of Penacone. Mikhail Char Legworth. The watchmaker. Damn! Wait a minute, wait a minute. So that's Mikhail in the middle? Or he looked just like Misha. Hold on a minute, bruh. Beneath the sea surface of memory zone, in a garden closest to the full moon in the water, an elderly man rests on a recliner, enveloped in utter silence. The watchmaker, Mikhail Char Legwork, has passed into that endless, timeless dream where no sound could ever awaken him. Sure enough, the watchmaker is the third nameless. Even I could guess that one. And he got that German energy. The legacy he left behind was a dream bubble. I believe inside that bubble, there's something that holds meaning only for the nameless. After all, when I checked its contents, I found nothing inside. Maybe some trailblaze runes? Even more mysterious than me. Well... Let's have a look. As the word sees, Himiko nods ever so slightly in your direction. You take a deep breath, steady your mind, and turn your gaze towards the watchmaker. Touch the dream bubble in Mikhail's hand. You press your hands against the dream bubble and the thick, vicious memoriam converges under strain, then stretches outward from your fingertips as if weaving a delicate web it gently cradles your palm. A chill travels from your fingertips, carrying with it a myriad of vibrant and intertwined memories as the experience would suggest. This time, you see nothing at all. How could this be? The dream bubble is clearly extraordinary. Perhaps the approach was wrong. You think, holding your breath and closing your eyes. With one knee on the ground, you press your forehead against the thin film coated in memoria. Yet, before you, there remains no abyss of darkness, no crimson sun descending upon snow-capped mountains, no gentle laughter, no twinkling stars, no echoes of swords clashing, and most of all, no traces of trailblaze. There is nothing, and nothing is there. Indubitably, this is but an empty dream bubble. Wait, what's going on? We've been debated. Seriously? Uh, there's nothing inside this dream bubble? Hmm. How could a dream bubble be empty? <laughs> Just as I suspected. That old man always had this strange belief in the nameless and the trailblaze. And I never understood where he got that confidence from. Especially since he never managed to get in touch with the Express while he was alive. I could never figure out what was going on in that old man's head. But this empty dream bubble is so typical of him. He was always full of weird fantasies and incomprehensible romanticism. <laughs> that mischievous old man. Well... Didn't expect him to leave anything concrete behind anyway. Why the hell did you bring me here? Don't think that's the case, Gallagher. I'm sure Mikhail has left us the most precious thing of all. <laughs> Don't start getting all philosophical on me, all right? Just as Mikhail believes in the nameless of the future, we unconditionally believe in the nameless of the past. How could they leave with regrets for the future when they were ready to dedicate their lives to the land they loved? There must be something contained in this dream bubble. It's just we haven't figured it out yet. You also have faith in the Watchmaker, don't you, Gallagher? Well, I'm a follower of the Enigmata. My philosophy forbids me to have faith in anything. That's why I understand what faith means in the path of Trailblaze. And... I also want to know what he left behind. <laughs> I'll leave it to you guys then. Hmm. Can I borrow your pet? I need to make a trip back to Golden Hour and check something at the Dreamscape sales store. He may. How are you planning on getting back? I don't want to see you get severed. It's for Mikhail. And for the future of Penacony. Please stay safe, He may. Welcome to the Reverie Hotel. How may I help you? Wait, Boothill and Dan finally made it. Greetings. We're the Nameless from the Astral Express, and we'd like to check in. The Astral Express? 
But I thought- Yes, there's more of us. Yes, my companions already checked in. My name is Dan Hung, and I believe my personal information is recorded in your system. I see, but your companion said you wouldn't be coming due to a change of plans. <laughs> now the plans have changed again. And you are... Me? Uh, I'm... Pom Pom. Bruh. A new nameless who's also with the Astral Express. There's no way. <laughs> <clears throat> He's my fellow trailblazer. We responded to the family's invitation before he boarded the Express. So he wasn't registered in your system. <clears throat> Is it possible to accommodate him as well? Oh, I see. Another one of the Nameless had a similar situation. Seems like a lot of people are joining the Trailblaze these days. Since there's a precedent, it shouldn't be a problem. Just give me a second to contact your companions. Uh-oh. I'm sorry, dear guests, but it seems I'm unable to reach the other members of the Astral Express. What do you mean by unable to reach them? We're dead, Dan, help us. My apologies. This is the first time I've encountered a situation like this. However, the system indicates that those guests are still in the dreamscape. How about this? Give me their room number, and we'll go check on them ourselves. Bro, that is the most sus thing you could possibly say right now. I'm afraid that's not possible. I need to verify both of your identities before I can share any guest information. How about you just wake up someone? Let's say, uh... Welt. I'm sorry, but there are strict rules regarding Forced Awakening. It cannot be done without the proper clearance. So nothing works, huh? What's your solution then? Are you saying we sleep here? At the reception? Please be patient. We need to contact your companions in order to confirm your identities. And now it seems you need to confirm our identities before you can contact our companions. I'll be getting screwed by the system. <sighs> It seems so. Oh, fudge. Look, nothing personal, but if you can't handle this, go find someone else who can, okay? Uh, please calm down, dear guests. I do recall that Mr. Sunday, the Oak family head, personally handled this issue earlier. Oh, please wait a moment while I contact him. I don't think she's trying to give us a hard time. She really just doesn't know what to do. Jesus Christ, this scene is way too relatable. I have a bad feeling about this. He tried to contact them on the Express earlier, but they didn't respond. <sighs> Something doesn't seem right. I need to leave for a moment. You can stay here with the receptionist. Sure thing. Just don't keep me waiting forever. And ninjas, that is all the time I've got for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it for your ass, man. Subscribe to become one of my ninjas. Join to become one of my ambu, and I will see you in the next video. Ninjas out.